The LangChain team introduced LangGraph BigTool, a new library designed for creating LangGraph agents that can access a large number of tools. Many of you might be curious how we can do this using MCP, allowing you to directly use tools from MCP servers. So this is what we do in this video. If you don't know about MCP, you can watch my introduction to it here. So when and why should we use LangGraph BigTool? Agents can be equipped with a large number of tools, potentially hundreds of tools. But the more tools you give them, the more they struggle to select the correct tool. Additionally, most LLMs have a limit of tools that you can give them. So we require a different approach if you want to use more tools. The big tool approach addresses this by storing all tools in a vector store. When a user asks a question, the agent retrieves only the most relevant tools from the vector store using similarity search. The selected tools are then dynamically bound to the LLM, ensuring the agent has access to the most suitable tools for the given task. So that was the theory behind it. Let's now have a look how this works in code. Okay, I'm now in VS Code. Here on the left, you can see multiple files. There is the big underscore tools underscore MCP IPython notebook, which is the notebook for this video. And we also got the server.py. This is a fast MCP server. And here you can see uh, multiple tools, uh, dummy tools like getting stuff from Wikipedia, uh, language translator, sentiment analysis, date calculator, and a lot of other dummy stuff. Okay, so that's the MCP server. As you can see, we use the SSE, Server Sent Events as Transport Protocol, and we're going to use that MCP server in combination with LangGraph Big Tool. So first, we have to install the required libraries by using pip install LangGraph minus Big Tool, and we also need LangChain OpenAI for this video. Okay, so back to the notebook, and first, we're going to load the OpenAI API key. Next step is that we kill the process on port 8000 if there is one. And after that, we're gonna use Python server.py to start our server and make it run on port 8000. So now we've got our um, server here running. So that's the MCP server. Next step is that we use a client. So LangGraph provides one, which is in the package MCP adapter. So if you don't have that, please run pip install langchain minus MCP adapters, install that and then we're gonna set up a server config. So this is done like this. So, so here we import some classes, we set up our LLM, and here's the server config. So this has to be a dictionary with a key. So that's the name of the server. We have to set the transport protocol and we have to set the URL. So the connection is done by using our local host and the communication is happening over the slash SSE endpoint. So, so that's how we connect the client to the server. We then instantiate the multi-server MCP client class with that server config. So now we've got our client and we have to connect to the server. This is done by using this context manager and I'm gonna use it just by using a enter. You could also use with and then the normal uh, context manager syntax, but I prefer it since it's more clear in this Jupyter notebook. Next method is get tools. So we get all the tools from the server. So this makes a request to the MCP server. So they share the tools. And here we can see these are all the tools in a list. So every tool is an instance of a structured tool with a name and a description. And the name and the description are key for creating the vector store. Next step is that we create a tool registry. And what's actually happening here is that we extend our dictionary by using a UUID, so a unique ID for each tool. So after doing that, this looks like this. Here you can see for every tool, we got a UUID before. This is important for the registry. Next step is that we create an in-memory store. This is often used for storing memory, but we can also use it for storing tools. So we create an instance of OpenAI embeddings. So that's our embedding function. And we use the in-memory class where we pass in this index dictionary. We got three keys here, embed, which is the embeddings function that we're gonna use dims for dimensions, so that's the standard uh, dimension number for building vectors, and also the fields that we're gonna embed. And we're just gonna use the uh, description. So we create that, and now we're gonna put every tool in the vector store. So we're gonna iterate over the dictionary where we get this tool, and this tool has got a name and a description. As you can see, here is the name, and there is the description. And now we're gonna create a new description, so that matches this field, and we're gonna embed this. So we're gonna embed the combination of the name and the original tool description. And this is the namespace, so we're gonna use tools, and here we've got a tool ID. That's the UUID 
that we're gonna use. So every tool has got its own namespace. So we're gonna save that in the vector store. This takes a few seconds. Okay, now we want to use our tools. How can we do that? We can use another tool to retrieve the correct tools. This function has got uh, this query argument and also the store that we're gonna use. So that's important for the agent. So this has to follow exactly this. So a query and also the vector store that we're gonna use. We're gonna use that query, that query is embedded and the most similar tools based on that question will be used to retrieve the correct tool to answer that question. In this case, we set the limit to three, but we could also increase it to let's say five, 10 or whatever we want. At the end, we're gonna extract the tool IDs from there because the tool IDs are used to reference the correct tools in the tool registry. So there we saved everything in a dictionary with the tool ID as key and the actual tool as value. Okay, so now let's create that function. And now we're gonna create our agent. So this create agent function is also from the new big tool library. And this makes use of the LLM. This is chat openai the tool registry, and also the retrieve tools function. This is what we defined here. So it has to have these three arguments. So we create this, and then at the end, we use the compile method to compile our graph. So that's still a normal graph in LangGraph. And we're also gonna use the store here as argument, because if we use a store, then we have to set it here as argument. So this is our agent. And now we want to ask, please add three and seven use any tool available to do so. So let's try it out. So here we can see we've got available tools, three tools, basic calculator, date calculator, and password generator. So that's the most suitable tool, and that tool is able to help us to answer that question. Okay, that's it. So that's LangGraph Big Tool. I think very easy and straightforward to use. And thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.